and uh, the only free that uh, Kerry got, they put it over the bar through Paul Ganey. And of course, Duddy Gold did get four of their points from free kicks. Just trying to see who came off, Jared. Is it Stephen O'Brien? It, it's uh, Stephen O'Brien, yep. Yeah. And Mikey Ganey, cousin of the goal scorer of Paul, the one who has uh, joined the match. Straight away, Oran McNeilish. One on one there. They did a man who just palmed it out as far as Peter Crowley. And immediately, uh, Kerry just go into their in depth defence once again. The emphasis being on making sure that they consolidate and keeping uh, two sweepers back at all stages. Fionn Fitzgerald now. Held on to here by Michael Ganey. Uh, as far as Donica Walsh, Kerry set to try and look for the first score of the second half. Inside towards Donaghy. Oh! A boot went at it and it uh, ended up going wide. Yeah, I think Close the run thing. Yeah, it was Paul Ganey, I think, got in in the end. That anticipated the breaking ball very well. Um, Donaghy, when you just watch it here, he's three team, two, or th two, or two of them are on him. But the breaking ball, just watch his instinct. And someone unlucky with it. As you say, Paul Ganey threw a boot at that one. Yeah, good cover, though, from the Donegal defence. Well, Ganey has a goal and two points. I think that second point, however, when he looks at the DVD later on, he will say, I should have put it in the back of the Donegal net. Paul Durkin, again, goes short out to the corner to Carol Lacey to begin a slow, methodical build-up involving McNeilish, Thompson, Ryan McHugh, Crossing the Kerry 65 metre line. On his shoulder here, a support player is McNeilish. And that one has gone away to the right hand side, and it's uh, a missed opportunity. In the end, the shot was by Rory Cavanagh, correction. Yeah, a little bit ambitious, Jerry, must be said. Very far out, I thought he might have tipped it into the full forward line. But once more, the Kerry defence is very, very well. They've He's underpinned by a great work ethic and a very good covering system. to win their own kick out and Michael Murphy set to try and exert a bigger influence now in the second half back to McLoon robbed initially by Killian Young but back to Murphy follows through brilliantly oh, he really is a lavishly gifted player fourth point of the match for Michael Murphy didn't work the first time and the ball came back to him and from a huge distance out, 40 metres from the target, straight between the uprights. Yeah, Donegal what? lead for the first time. This kick out for Kerry is won by Johnny Buckley, and then fouled, and then he runs into a Donegal player. And I wonder, is the referee going to cancel the free to Kerry? Because he went straight into Leo McLoon. Just wonder. Yeah, let's just see this. He's fouled, certainly, but he just comes straight into Leo McLuhan with the elbow up. He could throw the ball up between the yeah, two. Yeah, certainly he could. Yeah, he might reverse the decision. Or not reverse the decision, rather. Just throw the ball up. Throw the ball up between two. At the moment, it's uh, still a carry free to uh, David Moran, unless the referee does take some action. Dick Leo McLuhan is now saying, did you see what happened to me? It's still a free kick to Kerry. Mikey Ganey. Support play outside here, coming from Paul Murphy. Curling one in, oh, that's a wonderful point. Paul Murphy rejected at minor level because he was too small. Big mistake. Well, I suppose to err is human. And just consider uh, one Dick Rowe of the Decker records. He, re he rejected the Beatles way back along in the 60s. Yeah, that's a wonderful score, Jerry. Again, difficult angle, but great confidence in the lad to have actually executed that opportunity. Motto is, don't jump to conclusions. Rory Cavanagh, back in as far as Anthony Thompson. Flicked on by Murphy, but there's nobody anticipating the break here. Haven't seen, really seen that inside forward line of Dunny Gold function so far. Not as we anticipated, but it's been a, a peculiar kind of match. Yeah, both teams have been kind of so, so tied up and disrupting the rhythm of the other that they, you know, be influential and positive. David Moran once again takes command of this situation, but then runs in to Johnny Gold Clare as he wriggles in and out. Still has it somehow. How did he get away out of that? That is an amazing shot.
shot, which comes down off the post and is a way out of danger. And the crowd appreciated the individuality of David Moore at that time. Up it comes to Ola McNeilish. And this time, it's the Kerry fans who feel he should have been caught in possession and held, but the referee gives the free kick to Dunny Gall. Neely Gallagher. Carol Lacey, a point in the first half, really good score. Anthony Thompson, back to Gallagher again. Looking for options, nothing available to him immediately. Now he picks out McNeilish. Having a go. That languid style of his, but it's way, way off target. And that becomes a fifth wide now for Dunny Gall, six for Kerry. Yes, at times their attacks lack subtlety and variation, Jar, and they're, 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 they're so slow in building them up that, you know, the full forward line is pulled out of position when, you know, at times when the ball should be going in. Well, Kerry have done their homework. They watched the uh, semi-final where Donegal destroyed Dublin in the end, and uh, Ke- uh, Donegal themselves are struggling to come back up to that, that pitch they had three weeks ago. Murphy here against Ryan McHugh. On the day when the biggest prize in Gaelic football has been handed out, the Sam Maguire Cup. Really tough battle between Gaelic football's top two this year, Kerry and Donegal. Anthony Marr, change of direction by Murphy easily, with the outside of the boot, inside towards Donaghy, flicks it down. Here's an opportunity for Gaelic once again. He's missed. Curses his luck. Nothing so far in the second half, that's his second attempt. Yeah, there's no doubt about it, this long ball into Donaghy gives Kerry a different dynamic. Ganey has been very perceptive in picking up breaks, but their finishing has let them down badly on numerous occasions throughout the game. That was David Moran's uh, wonderful shot at the end of a, a mazy run through several defenders. Of course, he is the son of uh, Dennis, known as Ogie Moran. His dad played in eight All-Ireland finals. Uh, or rather, he played in ten, he won eight. Neil McLuhan gets it out here. Comes off the leg of Killian Young. Rory Cavanaugh. And Rory Cavanaugh this time pulled and dragged. No question whatsoever about the free kick entitlement. And then Kerry argued the toss. Silly to give away another 13 metres. And now they're calling out Michael Murphy. And this is very much within his range. He's kicked four points so far. Three of them from Freeze. So much emphasis has got into disrupting one another's rhythms, and I think from a Kerry point of view, they'll be disappointed that they haven't got more free each Michael Murphy. Away to the right. Another one has been missed. Teams remain level pegging, 1-4 to 7 points. Yeah, poor technique, I suppose, that time betrayed him. He sliced across the ball, but interesting again, Jer, nobody was in on the edge of the square for a ball to be punted in there. Brian Kelly into the hands or should be in the hands of Marr, but he couldn't hold it, and it's Christy Toy who's in quickly. Suddenly there's renewed energy from Dunny Gall. Rory Kavanagh here. Hand passed inside, back out to McFadden. Off his left. That's another one. A whole series of misses now. And Donegal need a boost, and I think the boost may well be provided by Paddy McBrearty's arrival in just a few minutes. That was very untypical of Colin McFadden. The McFadden of two years ago would have put that over the bar. Instead, the teams are level. Yeah, he had a good sight at the goals that time when he went forward, a good assist that time from Murphy, but he'd be very disappointed with the end result. Time for Paddy McBrearty, the 21-year-old from Kilcar, I think, to come in. He'll be coming in presently. In the meantime, Christy Toy. First substitute introduced by Jim McGuinness. McLoon. Thompson, back to McLoon again. Slips, Murphy has him. Literally. Somehow the referee there said fair challenge, and uh, Kerry got it out. And Anthony Marr takes the free kick. Peter Crowley. Back in here as far as Michael Ganey. He's got plenty of room in which to manoeuvre here. Offs to kick it himself from the 45-metre line. Never, ever looked confident. Not remotely confident that time. 
it must be said, Ger, the actual quality of forward play has disappointed hugely. You know, there's very little subtlety to it, there's very little variation to it, and the quality of players that you've said on a number of occasions that we expected something from aren't really getting on the ball. Well, there is a change then. Paddy McFreer to introduce for uh, Ryan McHugh. His uh, club mate, it must be pointed out, at Kilcar. What a difference uh, a match at Croke Park can make. The hero, the uh, man of the match, three weeks ago, Ryan McHugh substituted early stages of the second half. Anthony Thompson held in possession. Another free kick to Dunny Gall and Kerry doing a lot of fouling and they've got to be careful. Frank Buglin takes off, has that energy and pace to drive it in there towards Murphy, who gets away off his marker, turns around, didn't make the right connection. Under it here, McNeilish, Buckley for Kerry, touches it down. The race won there by Peter Crowley. Bending his back is Paul Murphy, getting it out as far as Crowley again. Deep inside Kerry's 45-metre line. Three up on the line here now to carry it out. Donica Walsh slipped forward here as far as Ganey. That's Michael Ganey. His cousin waiting inside in the square for a pass if it were to come. Fionn Fitzgerald. That's uh, James O'Donoghue, hasn't scored in the All-Ireland final. Trying to pick out Paul Ganey, but that time the race won by Paddy McGrath. First to the ball, did really well, the left corner back that time, McGrath. Yeah, but there's such an emphasis at the moment on defence, and it's been the same since the beginning of the game, that it's, you know, you just cannot see one team breaking out at the moment and building up a lead. Like, just look down at the right-hand side of the field, there's two Donegal attackers, there's six or seven Kerry defenders. It's a real struggle for both teams, no doubt about that. Leo McLoon against Anthony Marr. And in the end, they get it down, but Anthony Marr trying to get the ball back, McLoon held on too long and the referee had blown his whistle and given the free kick to Kerry this time with 47 minutes gone and the team still level who's going to get the next score? James O'Donoghue, Kerry good control, holds on Kieran Donaghy, but he's way, way out there's only one man inside near the goal area and that's Paul Ganey it's one against three in there one Kerry forward, three defenders from Duddy Gore Fionn Fitzgerald now Aidan O'Mahony, taking over now, Paul Murphy, clubmate of O'Mahony's at Rathmore. And once again, the experienced Aidan O'Mahony, playing in his eighth All-Ireland final, trying to slip it through to Buckley, and he gets it inside Carol Lacey, Buckley gets it back from Donaghy, looking to try and get the necessary room to kick the ball over the bar. And they've come all the way back to 50 metres out from Donegal's goal area. Murphy, has got one point already, that's Paul Murphy. The attack is maintained and Donegal Walsh has the final effort under intense pressure. So many passes to provide, finally provide a shot on, but wasn't even on target at the end. Real disappointment. Oh yeah, the game is becoming really bankrupt at the moment, Sure, Somebody needs to come in and provide a spark, but there's so much... Both defences are so much on top, the attackers are finding it very, very difficult to, to, to make any headway. Barry John Keane's on, and Paul Ganey, the player who got the goal after uh, about 50 seconds and added two points as well, is the one to make way. Well, the match has degenerated even since half-time, and it really does need something special now for us to remember this All-Ireland final in 2014 for the right reasons. Frank McGlynn, Rock this time. David Moran, fouled, fouled by Lacey, takes the free kick himself. Out there to gather is James O'Donoghue. Fionn Fitzgerald, it's all about just setting up the right situation now for somebody to get the kick away, and that wasn't the player. And that's Mikey Gady now having his second shot at the target, and he's way off, and that's ten wides by Kerry, really... It's a case of getting the ball into the right to the shooters, essentially. Yeah. We saw where James O'Donoghue was, Martin. He was out initiating the play 60 metres from the Donegal goal. Yeah, they're totally confused at the moment as to what they want to do. The good quality finishes are too far out from goals. They're taking their shot selection is all over the place. They're panicky shots. They're shots with very little conviction about them. And just somebody needs to take the game by the scruff of the neck very, very quickly. Or else we're just going to end up with a ball fest.
I know it's all about winning the title, and nobody will remember what happened at 5 o'clock when somebody's lifting the uh, trophy, but really, they now have 20 minutes in which to serve up something. O'Donoghue, a star all through this championship series. Mikey Donoghue. Mikey, again, he rather outside as far as Donica Walsh, and Walsh plants it in the square. Durkin got a good fist to it, but only out as far as Killian Young. Still, the initiative is there with Kerry. Going in along the end line, Young taken down outside, free. Chance for Kerry to go in front. And that may be something that will spark a revival here in terms of the overall contest. Killian Young taking the initiative himself here, going in, making sure that he got something for Kerry. He got a free kick, he also got a wallop. Yeah, good purposeful play at that time by Killian Young. He drove at the Donegal defence, he invited the tackle, he drew the foul, gives uh, Kerry now the opportunity to go ahead. And it's going to be uh, Barry John Keane kicking from 13 metres and putting it straight over. Simple free kick for him. But it gives Kerry fans a chance to cheer because they're in front by one five to seven points. And Dunny Gall are bringing in Martin McElhenney in place of Oral McNeilish. Yeah, McElhenney has been very good for Dunny Gall in all the games he's been introduced. He has a big physical presence around the middle of the field. McNeilish had his moment. Oh, that's terrible. Dunny! Second minute. Well, there have been so many errors in this match. A catalogue of errors. What a calamity for Paul Durkin. Far too clever with the kick out. Dreadful mistake. Easy goal for Kerry and for Kieran Donaghy, his 12th in Championship football. And the initiative is firmly now in Kingdom hands. And it's down as far as Barry John Keane. It's the kind of mistake that we'll remember this final for, and in many ways, it's symptomatic of what we've been watching. It sums it up in so many respects, Jared. Mistakes, you know, messy play, and all of that, and that was a bad, bad error by Paul Durka. David Moran. Little chink here by James O'Donoghue. Leaving it there to Christy Troy, trying to be too clever. Christy Troy. Donegal have plenty of time, they're four behind. They need to start playing. Michael Murphy has been a great leader for them over the last four years. Kicking in the free quickly. In as far as Paddy McBrearty. Will this be the man who will set up this final for us? He's got a point. Well, that's exactly what Donegal required. They were stuck on seven points for so long. Now 2-5 to eight points. Look at this for a dreadful kick out. Not sure what he was thinking, Paul Durkin. But that is a horrible mistake. Yeah, but from the word go today, you could see that Kerry have worked in the Donegal kick out. They have stymied it, they have frustrated them, and they have got the dividend. Killian Young has got possession from Kerry's kick out, and now Mark O'Shea chasing a fifth All Ireland winner's medal. The other four came against two counties Mayo twice and Cork twice. Johnny Buckley kicking it in. Huge one. Breaks back out here as far as Frank McGlynn. Neil Gallagher now as far as Leo McClune looks around he had two forwards ahead of him Donegal are behind and they better start thinking in terms of bringing men forward Martin McElhenney holding slipping it inside again it's Paddy McBriart he's already making a difference was it a shame or was it a mistake to leave him off in the first place he's got a second point can he be the one to turn this game around on its head in favour of Donegal? They're now only two behind, and we're 19 minutes into the second half. That's a wonderful response from McBearty. Twice he got the ball in one-on-one, -on -one, skinned his marker, put the ball over the bar, but they need to get more and more from him over the last period of the match. That's a great response from Donegal from what is potentially, and was potentially, a crippling blow. Shane Ann writes on, the captain, Fionn Fitzgerald, has gone off. It's not been a good year for Kerry captains. Kieran O'Leary sitting in the subs. He might be the captain. Colin Gooch Cooper, of course, badly injured all season. And that kick out's a very poor one, and it's straight out of play. And now it's up to Dunny Gall to see what they can do. They're only two points behind, and we've plenty of time left. 16 minutes. Neil Gallagher. On here as far as McElhenney. 
Great work by McElhenney. Inside here to Neil McGee. And McGee kicks it inside the post and over the bar. Only his third ever championship point, but his first today. The fans on their feet, arms in the air, clapping and saluting because Danny Goal had fought back from four behind to now be just one adrift of Kerry with 15 minutes still remaining in the 2014 final. What a display of character from Danny Goal. Other teams would have folded, but the McBurty uh, uh, couple of points and that one from McGee is a wonderful response from them. Fisted down again, this time from the kick out by Rory Cavanagh. This time picked up by Kerry. We could be in for a rip roaring last 15 minutes. And that's the least the fans who've come here and are watching elsewhere deserve. On it goes here. Anthony Marr. That one has gone away to the right hand side. Haven't been able to build on that gift goal they were given. And Kieran Donaghy's uh, 12th championship goal now. The brains trust from Kerry are in conclave aim. Fitzmaurice there, Keon O'Neill, Demer Murphy and Mikey Sheehy and it's time to bring in the greatly talented but wounded this year Declan O'Sullivan, he has been injured, what a talent this man is, he's coming on to play in his 70th ever championship match in just a moment, they need him, Kerry win back that Donegal kick out, Mikey Ganey down to Johnny Buckley, nobody marking him, chance of getting a kick away, and Buckley went down right to begin with, but curled back insufficiently to get right between the posts and over. Well, that's one of the scores of the game, it must be said. Buckley had that little bit of room, more room now is kind of appearing for both teams, but that's a great, confidently kicked score by Buckley. So Buckley is on his uh, first score of this match to make it two six to ten points and put two between them. And uh, the player who went off is Donegal Walsh, replaced by Declan O'Sullivan. And Donegal are also making a change. And David Walsh is coming on in place of Leo McClune, number 18. Started the semi-final, of course. Came off after 25 minutes. That's well caught by David Moore. Lovely catch. It's down to the last 13 minutes now of what really has been an intriguing, if sometimes error strewn, All Ireland final. The issue is in doubt. Lovely pass, beautiful ball by James O'Donoghue to Barry John Keane, and he takes a tumble. Neil Gallagher couldn't get to him, fouled, free in. But it was the quality of that pass by James O'Donoghue, who hasn't scored today, but who made that wonderful score possible, maybe the next score. Beautifully threaded ball through to Barry John Keane that time. OK, he's been playing further outfield than he maybe would like to, but Keane made the run off the ball and just precision from Donoghue that time to find him. Just to show how good O'Donoghue has been doing this year, he scored four goals and 24 points in uh, four matches, and that was his entire tally in his career up to this season. That's a second pointed free by Barry John Keane, and it keeps Kerry in front by three points. Yeah, it's interesting actually, since the mistake for the goal, most of all of Durkin's kickouts, Paul Durkin's kickouts since then have gone long. And I think the midfield players aren't really anticipating that. Well, the target usually is Neil Gallagher. He's standing on the 65 metre line, but it goes the other direction and it went straight to Johnny Buckley. Not going well. But that's not the first time it's been happening in this match. Now Declan O'Sullivan, star of the match, or one of the stars against Cork in the Munster final when Kerry absolutely destroyed the home team that day at Porky Creeve. Out it comes once again here to Anthony Thompson. Looks up, there's only two forwards inside, so he has to carry, has to keep on going. Anthony Marr knows that, He's trying to bottle him up over there. Declan O'Sullivan came in as well to lend his support. Rory Kavanagh keeps it going here. That's uh, David Walsh, first involvement since coming in. Thompson again, inside to Matt Breerty, he's causing major problems now, his new marker, of course, Shane Enright. Well blocked! What a brilliant piece of blocking that time, and he's been a Crowley. That was a fantastic bit of skill. Out to James O'Donoghue, a possible Dunny goal point at one end, was stymied because of a great block, and now at the other end, Kerry advanced, but lose it to Christy Toy. Christy Toy who scored two great goals at Croke Park in the past. Well, he's a mere 19-year-old here in the semi-final of the All-Ireland back in 2002, and here he comes again in possession. Outside as far as Frank McGlynn. 
and Danny Gualter is a calling for it, but they're all lateral, essentially, in a line. And they move forward now, rhythmically, with Carol Lacey. 65 metres, now 45 metres out. Again, target number one is Paddy McCreary, and McCreary cracks one this time, which is under hit, and easy for Brian Kelly to take. Ten minutes to go. Three points between the teams. Declan O'Sullivan now to control things, to calm things down a little bit for Kerry, to give them that little bit of extra experience and know-how. Held in play just about by Mikey Gain, he wasn't the greatest of passes. And Aidan O'Mahony ambles forward, that familiar style, and the change of direction inside Neely Gallagher, having a go himself inside towards Donaghy. Donaghy turns and Donaghy fists it over the bar. He's got a goal and two points, Kieran Donaghy. Star is starring in the 2014 All-Ireland Football Final, and it's Kerry by four points. Yeah, the old dogs for the hard road. Mahoney, good cross. Strength of Donaghy holding his defender off and takes a very good score. But it all came as a consequence of that wonderful block at the other side of the field. And it was by Peter Crowley. Peter Crowley indeed. Well done to him. Former pupil of intermediate school in Calorgal, and they'll be singing his praises there. And right now... They just want to get the ball back over there and uh, take the next nine ball. It's going to be Neil McGee who'll take it. Nine minutes to go. Still possible for Dunny Gall. They haven't been at their best today, but they haven't been allowed to be. Anthony Thompson, big one in. McBrearty, he's popping up everywhere and anywhere. He's now suddenly the dominant figure in the attack, and as I say so, he hits this one poorly on the way to the right-hand side, and it becomes Donegal's eighth wide of the game. Yeah, there are two bad misses from Donegal, one into the goalkeeper's hand and one wide that time, you know, they need every score at the moment, every opportunity needs to be converted at the moment at the get. If Eamon Fitzmaurice wins this, it's going to be a remarkable success, considering where they were at the beginning of this year. That's David Walsh and Mikey Ganey there. Well, it'll be a massive managerial triumph. You know, you remember the first round against Clare, for example, where they were behind by a point or two at half-time. And Martin, by four. you could go back to the month of April when they lost in, I think it was Tralee to Cork, by ten points in the league, and they then went on and hammered Cork, as I mentioned earlier, in the, in the championship. Quite a journey. Oh, it's been an incredible journey, but again, you know, to have taken a young and experienced group of players to the top, like, presumably that they're going to win this game, is some achievement. David Walsh, Mikey Ganey, both get cards. Time now is the enemy of Danny Gold. They need to get hands on the ball now, set up chances, need to get the next score. Kerry goes short, Aidan O'Mahony. I think he got a knock to the head there as he was getting that ball away. Colin McFadden, rather awkwardly, struck his uh, face, I think, inadvertently. Out as far as Anthony Marr, Killian Young. Now James O'Donoghue. He's been playing more conductor rather than uh, first violinist in this match so far. Declan O'Sullivan. Ganey again, that's Mikey Ganey. That's a good ball by Ganey. Across as far as Ma. He's going for glory. He didn't need to do that. He had other options. Yeah, their game management at the moment is superb. They're finding the loose men effortlessly. OK, the finished product was poor that time. That was, again, an unnecessary shot from a long distance. But they're just, at the moment, keeping possession so well. Dermot Malloy is on. Dermot the brick Malloy, the player going off Rory Cavanaugh. And that's five of possible six subs now used by Jim McGuinness and his management team. Scoring chances so far, you can see Kerry of the vast number, 26 to 18 for Danny Gall. Kerry leading this game by four points. Danny Gall in possession, Mac Brearty once again. McGlynn, first chance here for Dermot Malloy. Can he work the oracle? He can with this particular shot. He puts it over, his first touch, and now there's only three points or a goal between these sides. Yeah, they need to get every score, every uh, convert every opportunity to the god. That's a very confidently taken score. But again, as you say, there's just one score between them. So five and a half minutes are left in this final, the 127th All Ireland Football Final. Dunny Gold coming into it. This is their third 100% success record so far. Can they maintain it? A 
its advantage carry. McMurphy has it for Danny Gall and ready to take it back. Beautifully inside as far as Gallagher, being urged to go. Inside to McBriarty, turn back to Gallagher. They need to get a score out of this. Back as far as Christy Toy, on his left. It's got a curl in, it's on its way, and it's over the bar. Toy's first point of the match. It's a two-point game, thumbs up. Kerry 2-8, Donegal 12 points. Wonderfully worked score again, patience for Gallagher realised maybe he wasn't in a good position to take the score, but Toy has had a stormer today, as far as I'm concerned, since he's come in, and that was a very well-taken score by him. Brian Sheehan is uh, coming on for Kerry. That's Christy Toy who got that point a moment ago there. And there is Brian Sheehan who will be coming in in just a moment, it appears, to add another little bit of experience, another layer. Back there with David Moran now. Use of possession here, so vital now for Kerry. A slender advantage. Time running out, four minutes to go. Killian Young, all the way across to Paul Murphy, there's nobody on him. Chance now to do something productive with this. Back to a seemingly limping James O'Donoghue, but then he takes off, wriggles his way around. Back it comes to Murphy again, fed in as far as Johnny Buckley, and now back to the conductor of the orchestra, James O'Donoghue. They're going very short. They're looking for options. It's keep ball. Donegal fans don't like it. Kerry trying to run down the clock, trying to use possession sensibly and wisely. Unlike basketball, where there's a 24-second clock, they don't have to get a shot on target. They can just hold on and let the seconds tick away. And that's what they're doing. Two Donegal forwards, 13 backs inside their own 65-metre line, frustrated by this. Aidan O'Mahony. And finally, Mikey Ganey, in as far as Johnny Buckley, Referee allows an advantage, hand raised. James O'Donoghue tagged back then, and the referee now brings the ball back onto the 45-metre line for the first foul in that particular move as he saw it, and it's going to be a free in for Cork. Look at the number of hand passes, Gaelic hand passing at its best, or worst. Well, at its worst, it must be said. I mean, we, we admire Kerry for their use of the foot pass, and they have used it to great effect, it must be said today, but the way the game has evolved, the way the tactical uh, dimensions of it have evolved over the last while is critical to hold on to possession, and the easiest way to do that is to just handle the ball off to one another with the use of the hand They pass. must have had possession for the best part of 60 seconds there, Martin. That's right, it'll be interesting to see the lads will probably put a clock on that tonight, but uh, there's no doubt about it, their experience of the, you know, the older players has been manifest there in the last while, they're calmly going about their business, running down the clock, and now they have the ace long-range kicker about to try and get on the scoreboard. Two between them, this can make it three and that goal by Kieran Donaghy after 52 minutes following the poor kick out by Paul Durkin it really is the critical score of the second half Brian Sheehan moving beautifully and over the bar brought on to give a lift to Kerry when they've needed it in the last few minutes and it comes up with that long range free the silky skills of Brian Sheehan making it 2-9 to 12 points. Is that enough for Kerry? Is there more left in Donegal? Who in the second half have only managed to get 39% possession. Johnny Buckley, retained by Ganey. Brian Sheehan now. Just over a minute and a half still remaining. Killian Young. The monster champions lording it over the Ulster victors. Barry John Thakkeen, back as far as Declan O'Sullivan, almost pushed out over the sideline by Michael Murphy. What a frustrating day it has been, and when you see Michael Murphy eventually having to resort to pushing Declan O'Sullivan out over the sideline, you realise what an awful day it has been for Donegal at Croke Park. Yeah, well, it must be said, the man we're looking at there, Eamon Fitzmaurice, he put a tactical uh, you know, plan in place, it has worked, the tee for him, they disrupted Donegal, kickouts from the word go, the midfield dominance that I expected Donegal to get never manifested itself, and frustration is abounded throughout the team. And a but yellow card for Murphy. It was just always going to be difficult for Donegal to come up to that level they were at three weeks ago. Kerry have done their homework. Exactly, and the second game that Kerry had against Mayo was the making of the Surely jail. brought them on, exactly. 
Paul Murphy. Here's Aidan O'Mahony. Controlled by Brian Sheehan again. Almost into the red in terms of time. 2 9 to 12 points. And now it's a case of how many extra minutes? Two minutes. Board being held up by the sideline official Rory Hickey. As Killian Young got it out as far as James O'Donoghue. Is he to win an All Ireland medal on a final day when he doesn't score? Aidan O'Mahony back once again to O'Donoghue, but he's played his part. His ball retention, his vision, his awareness of where other people are. I'm not sure how injured he is here. Well, just cleverly white running down the clock chair. Very, very good play from Kerry. They've held us in. Going off is Kieran Donaghy, coming on is Kieran O'Leary. And when they come to lift the cup, I'm sure it'll be a combination of O'Leary and Fitzgerald will pick it up on the day when Kieran Donaghy got a goal in two points and absolutely lived up to his nickname. And Colm Cooper, who has been part of the squad all through the year, but uh, unfortunately that injury he sustained in the club semi-final in Port Leisure back in February really put pay to any involvement today. But he'll be a happy man watching his colleagues, watching his pals lord it over Donegal with just a few seconds now remaining as Brian Sheehan kicks it in. It's gone wide, but there's uh, just one more chance for Donegal if they can somehow summon up a goal-scoring chance. Oh dear, oh dear. Oh, that's that hugely is silly. unsporting. Very that much is so. hugely unsporting. Good luck to Kerry, let them win it, but that is hugely unsporting. That was Barry John Keane, gets a wow. yellow card for kicking the ball away. And the referee should give Donegal adequate time to launch another attack. Christy Toy. Across as far as Frank Foglin. Malloy. Back in as far as Christy Toy. Only a goal will save them. Murphy. Murphy trying to go in. Still Michael Murphy. In he goes. McCreerty. Stuck on the line. Almost there. Still it's down there. And the referee sees that there was a boot coming in there on the defender. Shane Enright went down for it, but the goalkeeper made a save and it could easily have ended up in the back of the Kerry net that time. Last opportunity falling to Donegal and they say so very nearly availed of it. Yeah, just let's watch this again. Your Murphy comes through, two or three tackles there, just drives his body through. Quick pass it is to McVerty, deflected shot is parried and McFadden most unlucky not to have got that into the net, but then it is a definitely a free out. Well, McFadden is the one denied back there, and that would have tied up the match. And there is a black card now being issued, and it is to Johnny Buckley. He's got a black card for that last tackle. Kerry, last few seconds of this match, penned back by Danny Gall, looking to try and get the football one more time. But they've given away a free kick this time, however. And Shane Enright is in no particular hurry to take the free kick, giving it instead to Brian Sheehan to take. The amateur whistler is waiting for the referee to blow his whistle, and he does! What a day it's been! Kerry have won the All-Ireland! A remarkable achievement for Eamon Fitzmaurice and his squad. The fans overjoyed! Victory today over Denny Gall, who've been so ably led once again this year by Jim McGuinness. But it's celebration time for Kerry. The Munster champions, what a day for Eamon Fitzmaurice, who looks the calmest man of the lot in Croke Park. Kieran Donaghy goes out to celebrate. It's five years since the county's last success at this level. Well, the tune, I think, can now be renamed because this year it's been a case of Eamon still winning matches. And what a year it's been for Eamon Fitzmaurice, for Kerry. As we mentioned earlier, they struggled in the league. Jim McGuinness walks away, great achievement to have got to the final, but it just wasn't his day. Disappointment for Frank McGlynn as well. But it's all about Kerry. Kerry, who just about got over Clare in the championship, hammered Cork stuttered against Galway, took two games in extra time to remain standing after Refi Contest versus Mayo, and here they are, crowned champions for 2014, full-time score, Kerry 2-9, Donegal, 12 points.
about it. Well, there's no doubt about it, Ger. We are reacquainted with the familiar again today. The 37th win for Kerry in All Ireland. And as I said earlier, it's as much a managerial success as anything else because to have taken that group of young lads, to have brought them into the first All Ireland, to have brought them through the season where at times they stuttered and times they didn't impress, and to have got them playing with such discipline today, with such cohesion, and with such, you know, being able to kind of, in a sense, take on a defensive system that they wouldn't come natural to them that took some doing and there is no doubt about it when you consider that Galvin was gone Tomas Roche is gone no Colin Cooper Kerry people wouldn't give you much of a chance before the season but they merited that win today they got the scores at the right time the gift of goal in the second half was the key goal but they were the better team on the day they led by 1-3 to 6 points at half or they'd rather drew at half time by 1-3 to 6 points they led with a goal after about 50 seconds and that was a goal scored by Paul Gainey Let's go down as far as uh, Joanne Cantwell. Yes, that man who's been celebrating. It was difficult to get you, Kieran Donaghy. There were so much celebrations going on there. For Kerry, it's been a long time since in all Ireland. How sweet is this one? Yeah, I know. It's possibly the best one yet. Um, there's an unbelievable bunch of young lads there. I suppose myself, Declan Mahoney, and uh, Cullum and a few of the older guys. The younger guys have really brought us on. And I suppose they, they drove it home today. Um, we have a great manager in Eamon Fitzmaurice who stuck with us when we weren't giving him our best but he always had faith in us and I'm just privileged and honoured to be able to talk out with him today and uh, help them to this victory. Well, that you did. You know teams aren't supposed to win all Ireland's when they're so supposedly in transition. Yeah, look, the transition talk, I think Joe Bradley, Joe Bradley told told us the production line was finished in Kerry. Well, Joe Bradley, what do you think of that? We had no his father was from Tyrone. <laughs> in the commentary box, Joe Canning and Martin Carney, and here on the panel, of course, we have Colin O'Rourke, Kieran Whelan, and Joe Brody. Joe, do you want to respond to that? <laughs> Just made you know, You know that man had thrown blood in him. They're all the same. <laughs> no, I mean, look, we were talking about this before the game. The system is king nowadays. These two managers know their business. It was coming down to narrow margins. They said at half time, it could be one mistake. I mean, who would have thought that Paul Durkin would have gifted the goal? The game could have gone either way. But, I mean, Paul Durkin giving that away. And you'd also have to say that Eamon Fitzmaurice followed up his early, early tactical triumph with Guinea being mismatched against McGrath by bringing on Sheehan for the last three, by bringing on Sheehan Enright as soon as Paddy McGrady started to ca cause trouble, by instructing the Kerry team to hold possession in the, in the last four or five minutes. At one stage, they held the ball for 90 seconds. Mm. Donegal could have no complaints because they got their own medicine today. And that's the way to play against Donegal. You've got to do what they do. I mean, I've got to say that I didn't think Kerry had advanced to this stage that they would beat Donegal, but, well, I mean, I suppose that the goal, you would have to say, whilst recognising the legitimacy of Kerry's win, one, was the deciding factor in one, it. One key reason, Michael, sure. is, yeah, is, uh, is, is versatility. Kerry had versatility. Yeah. They've been able to adapt right throughout the year against each individual opponent. And, and that, that's the reason why, why, why they... If effectively yeah. won today. Obviously, the goal was critical, but they had that versatility to be able to match Donegal at their own game and get off the line. There's another one of the happy players, Declan O'Sullivan, with yet another All Ireland medal, and it's been quite a few years since his first time for the trophy presentation. Let's go back to Jer. Well, Liam O'Neill is uh, ready to make that presentation. On third shot, on brave shot, Boja, shot to, truck a shot to Orlish. Dylan Povron of Green, the Dunan Owl, be bleeding the Hunter Buckle for the young Point to Shaw, August Dimmersheet, the Hunter Canoe. Paul and Wilkes of Oil, that are not a hurry, Super Value, GA Go, August Aircom, August Alicia Corja, is Kushoish, August Anora Domsa, Corn Samuel Curry, Kogarlik and Skiri. What a great day it has been for Kerry. And now GEA President Liam O'Neill presents the Sam Maguire Cup to the joint captains, Fionn Fitzgerald and Kieran O'Leary. They're all Ireland champions once again. Champions for the 37th time. Sam is going home. And Eamon Fitzmaurice 
has made it happen and the fans are celebrating every moment of this and loving it. What a day. So as Shane Enright and all the others pass on the trophy, let's go back to the studio and to Michael. Thanks, sir. Kieran O'Leary, proud Kerry captain, might not got much time on the field. He certainly made up for it on the podium with his uh, co-captain, of course, from the Dr. Croaks club, um, Fionn Fitzgerald. Uh, Colm O'Rourke, just at the end of the match there, uh, Martin Carney made a point in his commentary and he was